take a little walk break here. Otherwise I won't be able to speak. Gotta save some air for speaking. Just coming up to the mushroom colony here. No mushrooms at all this year. They have been denied growth. I have my voice recorder with me in case I get inspired later on. So, starting part two of this week's YFM Summer 2022. I don't often see deer in Mount Douglas. It's weird. You're more likely to see them in your own neighbourhood than here in the forest of fun. Anyway, back to my run. So, this little section is a bit noisy. I don't normally record here because of the road here. Very soon I discovered that these trails took you away from the roads and into the forest. This is where I once saw an owl. So I'm ready this time in case the owl makes another appearance. I'll probably hear him before I see him. Okay, so I've sorted out a few of my sound level issues. I think we're going to be good now from now on. Basically, I just turned Samantha down and the music up, but not so loud that if I meet somebody on the trail, I won't scare them. So this is usually 
the muddy section around the back of Mount Douglas along by the farmland. But uh, I'm taking it super easy today just because I can. Okay, so I'm now as far off the edge of Mount Doug as I could possibly go without crossing a fence. This is the perimeter trail at this stage. I'm not even sure if it's still called Whitaker. We'll soon find out. But when I get back, I can check the name of this trail. It's a long way to the saddle. Whenever I do an extended loop of the saddle, I come this way. The only thing I might not catch is Samantha's updates, but using you guys as a gauge of my effort, I shall very soon realize if I'm going too fast. Zone 3 is just a little hard for me now. I should be in Zone 2 as much as possible today. So, your five minutes, summer 2022, part two, is imminent. It might just be Bruce and me, but I'm hoping that one or two other people rise to the bait. Part one was very pleasant. I liked listening to that. 22 minutes. I think for 23 minutes is good. It also prevents Spreaker from putting an ad, ad break in the middle of the show. Okay, well, anyway, went out for my morning birthday run today and got a long run in. Two and a half hours was the plan. I've changed from what I used to, and part of this because I'm more again into coaching and read all about the better it is to go by time rather than just distance because after a certain point you're more likely to get injured and that so I'm doing that with myself today's run was two hours 31 minutes for 12.7 mile had a warm-up cool down and that was mostly walking and I mixed in easy run with some uh, marathon pace running so and myself I think I went pretty good Today, I'm happy with the results. It was a very humid day. I'm very happy. There was a nice little group there, my running group today. Uh, ran Don, uh, Aaron, and Bryn. Yeah. And who else was there? Mark, Chrissy, and I'm forgetting somebody. I'm sorry about that. Uh, and Mark, Bryn, John, Don, Chris, that might be it. So, I uh, went out. And it was back and forth on the bike trail in both directions. Just mix it up a little bit. You know, some people don't really like it because you're just one straight line both ways. But if you're running with the right people, that shouldn't matter. And But overall, I'm very happy. That gets me up to 37.6 miles with that so far this week. We have one run to go tomorrow. And that's some, For me, that's an improvement in mileage. Probably won't be hitting 40 again next week i'll have to check uh when i got planned and uh being on like i said this week i'm off work so i was able to handle some extra miles and i kept them pretty easy nice you know nothing hard in those extra miles the speed work parts are already planned in well anyways since it's my birthday i don't take a quick look to see which races I, I've i ever run actually on my birthday and slim pickings here <laughs> I had to really search so none of the longer races I've never had a half definitely not a marathon on my birthday being it's in August I probably wouldn't do a marathon I've done 
half marathons in August. So I looked, I could have done a half tomorrow. I didn't. And to everybody out there that uh, sent happy birthday wishes, thank you very much. Well, hey there. This is Jim and the lovely Miss Reagan. And I was just thinking. So, I'm back. Kind of. So I wanted to come back and let folks know about my progress. I do have some progress to talk about. So in my last episode on this podcast, I mentioned I was taking an August holiday. And I just want to say, I love the way the Brits talk about vacation as a holiday rather than a vacation. Maybe it's just the word, but I'm going on vacation. Doesn't sound as good as I'm going on holiday. I don't know. Just sounds, just sounds cooler. Anyway, good on you, England. Good on you. Anyway, so I mentioned I have some improvements. So my headache is markedly better. Still have the, uh, the tinnitus or tinnitus, potato, potato. And I will have the neurology dude this coming Wednesday to chat at to tell me why I might still have that. But the headache markedly improved. In fact, I would even say almost completely gone. Um, hard to explain. There's just that kind of, you know you're not 100%, but you don't feel terrible kind of thing. Where before, I didn't actually feel good. I was just kind of getting through the days. So, I said if I felt better, I would come back and tell you. And now I'm back, and I'm telling you. So what do I think it is so far? Well, honest answer is I don't know. That's why we have the neurology dude. But, uh, I think this may have been a complication of medication, which would explain why it lasted so long. So what does that mean? Well, I had classic symptoms of a tension headache. So tension headaches generally will either go around your head like a, like a headband, right? classic sign of a tension headache, or you might have it on the top of your head. Classic tension headaches. Sinus headaches tend to be on your face, i.e. around your sinuses. Cluster headaches tend to be over an eye. And migraines tend to be on one side or the other. Right. But top of your head or around your, your head like a 1970s headband, classic sign of a tension headache. And there are a lot of things that can cause tension headaches. They're thankfully the most common, so they're the least scary, right? Um, but uh, one of those things can be blood pressure. So I had noticed in my last doctor visit that my blood pressure was in fact elevated. Now, not elevated for most people, but elevated for me. I had a blood pressure of 124 over 78, which for a lot of folks would be huzzah. That's a great blood pressure. But for somebody who normally runs 106 over 60, that's up. So, I went, hmm, that shouldn't be that high. I started looking at the medications I was taking, and 
We have had absolutely insane, insane allergies this year. Um, I mean, just like walking through a yellow haze of all the pollen that just blew up this year. Lots of people I know have had allergies way, way worse than they've ever had in the past. So, of course, one of the medications I can take as needed for that, something called Flonase. And, uh, you know, it's part antihistamine, part nasal steroid. And I can use it every day if I need to. Um, in order to clear out my schnoz, so to speak. Well, I think I'd probably been using that for quite a while because it was like every day I'd wake up and I'd be like, oh, I'm so congested again, you know? And just, it was nasty. So I was using that, and one of the side effects of that is actually increased blood pressure. And I probably have not used Flonase so many days in a row uh, as I have this year. So, normally it's kind of, I'll need it for a couple days and I can knock it off. And then I might need it for a couple days and I'll knock it off, right? But this was just seven days a week, constantly, four weeks. So I wonder if it kind of built up and it's like, okay, buddy, it's a little bit too much, even though taking it as directed, just a lot longer than I normally have had to in the past, so that's my, uh, that's my theory right now, because again, I stopped that on the 30th, and I noticed as of August 1st, not so much on the 31st, but definitely on August 1st, headache was noticeably different, noticeably less, so, so we're thinking that might be it, so, but pass that information on to the neurology dude, and the neurology dude will tell me if that makes sense, or if, you know, I do in fact have a tiny gnome trying to dig its way out of my brain, which I don't. So, there you go. Anyway, um, that's it on the headache front. Hopefully we're done talking about that, but let me tell you, after... I don't even know how many days it is. Literally, I stopped counting at 53. So I'm here on Quadra Street, one of the busiest streets in Victoria, just about to turn off onto Nicholson. Distance 3.58 kilometers. Average heart rate 138. We're on that street. Okay, Nicholson is a down. For the first part. Free firewood. That's interesting. So I'm recording audio with my camera today once again. Trying to iron out a few little glitches that I found. One of it was one of my zippers or something on what I was wearing yesterday was flapping around a lot. That I had this annoying little tap 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 by the time I started running. It was definitely in cadence with my steps. So I'm thinking it was the zipper of my long pants. Time 29 minutes, distance 3.75 kilometer, average heart rate 134, workout average pace 7 minutes 43 seconds per kilometer. This is going to be a. Oops, this is going to be a. 8 kilometer run by the time I'm done. Hello. It's got car removal. Good to know. So I'm just about to reach that little roundabout doohickey up ahead. Then the trail, the road, I should say. I'm so used to running trails. Then the road goes up until it gets to the top of Nicholson, and then I'm down again onto Mount Douglas Crossroad. But the reason I chose this route was because it takes me past 
Time 30 minutes. Distance 3.91 kilometers. Average heart rate 137. Workout average pace 7 minutes 40 seconds per kilometer. It takes me past a drinking fountain. And that is why I chose a slightly longer and more boring route for this little supplemental recording. I will have to take out the chainsaw or the circular saw. There's some guys doing some roofing over there. Anyway, that's my woes. Thanks to everybody who contributed to your five minutes summer submission. That was fun doing. And uh, I won't bug you for another group submission until Christmas time. So I'm taking another little break here because I saw this delightful scene of three shorn sheep eating the green grass in the shade of the house. So I'm about two miles from home now. And I'm looking forward to hitting the next water fountain, which will be at the rec center. Alright, my heart has calmed down now. I can continue my run.